On today's Locked on Jayhawks, joined by Nick Schwert, we are going to go over some KU basketball stuff. How good is Jalen Wilson? And I'm going to pitch kind of a, I don't know, maybe too daring of a question for Nick. I've also got some uh, Thanksgiving KU basketball segments coming up in the show right here with Locked on Jayhawks. You are Locked on Jayhawks, your daily podcast on the Kansas Jayhawks, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Derek Johnson. You can hear me as well on Rock Chalk Sports Talk Monday through Friday from 3 to 6 on KLWN and Lawrence. Thanks for making Locked on Jayhawks your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts. And on today's edition of Locked on Jayhawks, joined by Nick Schwert. You can find him with the Wave in the Wheat podcast. You can also hear him as the producer of Cody and Gold on 610 in Kansas City. And today's episode brought to you by Upside. Download the free Upside app. Use promo code LOCKED to get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. Kansas in basketball squeaks by again in Southern Utah on Friday night, 82-6. That comes right after they uh, get a victory over Duke in the Champions Classic. I I guess when you take a look holistically uh, of what we saw last week, we really saw kind of the highs and the lows for this team. Uh, does that second game cause you worry at all? I, I think for me, I'm I'm just like uh, in a month or two, we probably aren't even going to remember it. But I don't know. Do you have anything that, that you have big takeaways from from last week? The only thing I don't I don't know if it would cause me concern, but it's just like one of those things I'm going to jot down and see if it's still an issue in a couple of weeks is the offensive rebounding. It, it, for, excuse me, the defensive rebounding for Kansas, the offensive rebounds allowed to Southern Utah. Like when it, when Duke kills you on the offensive glass and putbacks, it makes sense because you've got three of the top five players in the recruiting class. I guess only two of them were actually playing, but you got seven footers, you got athletes out there and you're playing undersized with a six, seven big man. Like it makes sense that you're going to get killed on the offensive glass. The fact that it happened against Southern Utah, that to me is something where I wonder because personnel wise with the way KU's playing, it makes sense your starting big man is six, seven and the guys who I think we thought were going to play bigger roles this year, Ernest Uday, Zach Clements right now, they're just not quite there. And I'm waiting for that to happen. If it doesn't happen, is Kansas going to be able to manufacture more production defensive rebounding? Because that is, I mean, I don't care what you think about stylistically, what wins in college basketball if you can't grab defensive rebounds, which is like, I don't know, maybe the most important thing you can do on defense, then you're not going to be a great team. So it hasn't cost them quite yet. It didn't cost them against Duke. So I guess it's, even if they would, if it would have cost them against Southern Utah, you would have said, well, you just beat Duke two days ago. So I'll chalk that up to an anomaly. But uh, that's the big thing that I'm kind of looking at right now with this team. Yeah, and I agree with both those. I, I also think like what you said with Duke, it's it's kind of a unicorn team. You're You're probably not going to play many teams who even have one of what their big guys are. And they have like three or four of them with Southern Utah is weird because they, they had the one like six ten center, but they played a lot of minutes with a six, 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 seven guy at the five. I think Kansas, I said this coming into the game Friday. I thought it was just kind of a letdown opportunity. You just had the big Duke win. And then this next week you're going to the Bahamas to, to play a bunch of different teams. I think they just got kind of like out efforted and stuff. And, and maybe that's good for Bill Self. But uh, I guess the one positive takeaway from the game, Jalen Wilson goes for 33 points. And each and every game, he just continues to stack up more and more kind of that resume that says, yeah, he is going to be an All-American candidate. He is going to be a Big 12 Player of the Year candidate. Maybe he's going to even be a National Player of the Year candidate. And I got to kind of thinking on this. Have you thought about it all that if Jalen Wilson wins national player of the year this year, which is like not that far fetched from how he's kind of started things, he could go down as the greatest Bill Self player of all time. Please elaborate, right? But think about it. Please elaborate. If he wins national player of the year, right, he would now be one of two Bill Self players to ever win that award. He would also be the only Bill Self player to both have that award in his possession and to have won a national championship in his career. Okay, so who do you think is the best Bill Self player currently, like right now? Mm. Is it Frank Mason? Because Frank Mason doesn't have the title. Is it Ochai? Because he does have the title, and he was best player in the conference, All-American. 
I think probably for me, it's it's Frank. Um, I'd probably Frank would be there. Uh, shortlist like Sharon Collins, Ochai. Those would probably have to be the top three in some order. I don't know okay, if I'm so, forgetting so, someone. So I think that both Frank and Ochai, if you just t- gave me the top 10 players in Kansas basketball history, I think Frank's probably top 10 all time. Again, he, he swept the National Player of the Year awards. Ochai's close. Ochai's right on that cusp. I it's to, it's so tough without seeing the totality of the season because that's one thing that it is, man. It's that when guys have seasons like Ochai just had or that Frank just had, you're always waiting for the other shoe to drop. Not because you don't believe in them, but because look at both of those guys and Jalen's in the exact same category. It's not that they were bad players before. It's that they were not even, Frank Mason as a junior was not even, I mean, in the conversation amongst the best players in the country. Same with Ochai two years ago and same with Jalen last year. So it's such a massive leap from one year to the next. It's not like Drew Timmy, right? Where you go from averaging 15 and 9, 16 and 10 to all of a sudden being a 20 and 12 guy. It's not like it was a nice gradual step. It's It's a massive leap. So you're waiting for the other shoe to drop, and it, it's never impressive enough until you get to the end of the season and you go, wow, he never fell off, right? Nobody ever had an answer for him. So I don't, I mean, what, what's what's Jalen averaging at this point? 25 and nine? 25, nine and like four or five. Well, that's it. If he aver- <laughs> If he averages 25 and nine, then like I'm all aboard, man. But... I mean, because that's what you're talking about. You're not just saying he would be the best Bill Self player ever. You're talking about that would that if you're the best Bill Self player ever, then you're one of the 10 best players in Kansas basketball history, which would be kind of shocking to say. But you know what? That's also that's the that's the sort of path that a lot of these guys have taken. It's not like the the Paul Pierce, Rafe LaFrance. Nick Collison path where like we just mentioned, like those guys were great as sophomores and then were even better as juniors or were great as juniors. And then we're even better as seniors. It's more about, Hey, you kind of bide your time. You play a secondary role. And then all of a sudden roster turnover, you're the man. And then you run away with it. That's kind of what we've seen with Frank. That's what we saw with Ochai. And if Jalen does it this year, then yeah, but it's just so four games into his senior season, it's kind of tough to wrap your head around. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I'm not saying, like, it's it's guaranteed. I'm just saying, like, if this does happen, he wins player of the year. Because to this point through four games, he has looked really, really darn good. I think that is a real conversation. It's, it's weird to talk about because you'd be looking at, like, think about it. With Sharon Collins, like, his case for whenever we talk about some of the best Bill Self players, it's he had the national title. And then he had two unbelievable seasons. He didn't win player of the year, though, but he had two unbelievable seasons. With Frank Mason, it's he had the national player of the year uh, season where he swept the awards. If Jalen Wilson won national player of the year this year, he would be like a combination of the two. He would have the title from last year and he would have the the highlight season as well. And I, I, it's just like you said, it's very hard to wrap your head around because, you know, if, if I would have told you a month ago, we would be having this conversation right now. You would, I don't know, you punch me in the face. <laughs> uh, in the first half of the Duke game, during the game, during the game, I bet Jalen Wilson at 36 to one to win the Wooden Award. By the next morning, he was up to 12 to one. So <laughs> it's a little shocking to me that these books didn't consider the idea that the best player on the defending national champions, you know, might have a chance to be the best player in the country. But I mean, even the production that he's had, even if you thought he was going to have a big year, even this is shocking just the amount of uh, of volume that he's getting and the numbers that he's putting up through four games. All right, we got more with uh, Nick coming up here. I've got a, a fun little basketball segment in a moment. But first, this episode is brought to you by Upside. Inflation has us all thinking about different ways to cut back, whether it's driving less, dining out less, or buying less from the grocery store. We can all agree there's nothing fun about less. That's why you should get Upside. With Upside, you don't have to cut back because you get cash back on every purchase means more date nights it means more that you can get at the grocery store maybe more sporting events that you can attend to get started download the free upside app 
Use my promo code LOCKED. Get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. Then claim an offer for whatever you're buying on Upside. Check in at the business. Pay as usual with a credit or debit card and get paid. In comparison to credit card rewards or loyalty programs, you can earn three times more cash back with Upside. Upside users are earning more than a million dollars every week. That's probably why they have a 4.8 star rating on the App Store. Download the free Upside app and use promo code LOCKED to get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. That's $5 or more cash back on your first purchase $10 or more using promo code LOCKED. So you've heard of the 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 game uh game show, TV show, whatever it is. Whose line is it is it anyway, right? Oh yeah, I watched that uh a lot as a kid. Okay. Well, this isn't really like that, but I'm stealing the the Wait, name of it. Up. It's it That's It's who's the introduction. <laughs> Yeah, great. Uh, it's whose stat line is it anyway? Ah. So I'm going to I'm going to read you a stat line. It might be from a game. It might be from a season, whatever. You can guess who did it. I'll give you some context to it and then we can uh, discuss. So the first one here, 16 minutes played, zero points, zero rebounds, zero assists, zero steals, zero blocks. This came against Southern Utah. Who would that be? Bobby Pettiford. That is correct. Bobby Pettiford with the, uh, you, you know, know why Snell. So, you know why I was actually like not even locked into this game. I was traveling during this game, but I knew that he was the only guy who played it all off the bench. And I knew that everybody that all the starters played like 29, 30 minutes. So that was a total guess, but it was only because I knew he was the only bench guy who got minutes. Why, but by the way, I mean, I guess what, what happened, what happened yeah. to like the depth that we saw on display versus Duke? Like everybody's getting some run and then all of a sudden for Southern Utah, that's when the rotation tightens up. Like I would have figured it would be the yeah. opposite of that. No, I, I don't know what to make of it because the bench, you, you got nothing from them. You got that game from Bobby Pettiford who, you know, I'm still high on long-term, but I, I don't know what happened there. MJ Rice comes back and he's just quick trigger off the bench and went over three over four quickly gets that's, pulled by out. The way, that's going to cost him if he keep, because like the volume in the, in the North Dakota state game was insane too. I think he took like 10 shots. Like that guy is looking to fire when he's out there. <laughs> like, I, don't, I don't think that's exactly what the, I mean, I think some guys maybe hear like, hey, we want you to give us energy. We want you to go out there and be aggressive. And they always, every bas every freshman basketball player ever is like, oh, so you want me to shoot every time I touch the ball? It's like, no, 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 no. I don't think that's exactly what they had in mind for you. So that might be a bit of a learning curve for him. Yeah. And then, I mean, the, the big, big struggle off the bench. Well, they have to get more from the bench moving forward, especially when you look at, you know, I don't know who the third okay. option of the you team don't is going to be. You don't say four bench yeah. points isn't going to cut it the rest of the season. <laughs> no. Okay. How about this one? Uh, 12 of 16. So 75% from the field. O of six at the foul line. KJ Adams. That is KJ Adams. Two for oh, two baby. so far. I'm killing it, baby. <laughs> yeah, dude. KJ, I, I, listen, I'll tell you this right now. If we're going to be doing this all season, I, I, I promise you, I will be the foremost KJ Adams advocate. Because like I already, I already get this sense that people are ready to see like Ernest sort of take over, and it's it's not to the point where everybody wants him to play more. I don't know. I wasn't really locked in on Twitter. Were people clamoring for him to get more run? Honestly, the one I've seen more because you're right. There, there's always this guy, uh, especially at the early point of the season, that'll carry on through all season where there's a subsection of the fan base that is like, why is this guy not getting more run? And, and this guy needs to play us last year was kind of Dewan Harris. Honestly, it wasn't as much earnest in, in that game. I think because the centers were struggling, I've actually seen a, a, I don't know, a fair amount. It's again, it's a small subsect of people talking about MJ rice over Kevin McCuller. And that is like a complete non-starter for me. Uh, are you kidding me? What Kevin McCuller it, Watch Kevin McCuller for five minutes. I said this on my podcast last week. Any game, just do it the next game. Just pick a five-minute span and don't watch anybody on the court other than McCuller. And I heard that McCuller, I, I didn't see the beginning of the game, but I heard he kind of struggled. I didn't even go back and watch it, full disclosure. Um, I only saw the second half, but uh, that he struggled early. Watch him for five minutes defensively. It is one of the most impressive things I've ever... He might be the best individual offender Bill Self's ever had. And that's saying something considering you had Marcus Garrett on your team three years ago. That play he made against Duke when uh, Filipowski... 
was driving fast break. He's backpedaling, falling out of bounds, and steals the ball and somehow saves it. And that was the play where Uday almost threw down the, the pick on the other side, I think it was. But like that was, and maybe I'm, I'm confusing two plays, but that was such an impressive play. I love watching Kevin McCuller play. As for, whoa, as for, <laughs> as for KJ Adams, this is great for anybody who's watching on video. Mm -hmm. I think that like it's it's easy to say that the ceiling won't be there for him because he's a six seven big guy and you want to see that true rim protector, but it's very clear that none of the other guys are ready for that. Like Ernest is not that either, and Ernest is he looks to be a little lost out there. Like he had that really bad stretch in the second half against Duke where he was just never in the right spot defensively. KJ is that dude who Bill Self has one of these guys every single year where it's not flashy. Guys want to see the dudes with more potential, higher ceiling. But what KJ does is he doesn't mess up other people's jobs. He's not out there getting in the way. He's not messing up the flow of the offense. People can trust him. He's just in the right spot doing the right things. And that means he's going to play. Oh, and by the way, is there anybody on this team who plays harder than KJ? Like that kid's motor is insane. So whether you want to see other guys play more or not, he's going to have a role all season. Okay, last one for whose stat line is it anyway? Nine points per game, which is third on the team. Five blocks, which is third on the team. It's, I know who this is. I'm going to go three for three. It's Dewan Harris. It is. Yeah. What a surprise. And he, yeah, because he had, uh, I saw, I was looking at his Kim Pom numbers a couple, like uh, after the Duke game, and I was like, it's like top 200 shot blockers in the country, but. Uh, he's been so good this year, man. And if he was good, last is that sustainable for you? Is that sustainable that he is the mainly block? obviously not the block? No, not the blocks, not the blocks. Uh, the him being third on the team in points per game, maybe the nine points is sustainable. That doesn't sound that crazy, but I, I guess two parts of that is it sustainable for him to be the third best scorer on the team? And if he is, is that a bad thing for Kansas? Um, it is sustainable, but I no, I don't think it's a good... Yeah, I do think it's a bad thing. Because because that's just not who he is. Ultimately, I, I still think McCuller is going to get back. Like, I don't think he's been good on offense at all. I think some of the... Like, he's taking a lot of mid-range jumpers. Probably too few many uh, for my taste. Other people may like that, but I don't think that's his game. And I, and I think he'll improve his shooting a little bit. So ultimately, I, I wouldn't be shocked to see... McCuller's scoring numbers improve, but I think ideally you will just get more production from the big guys. That's the problem is we've said it a million times. You and I did it, you know, year after year after year talking together on, on Rock Chalk Sports Talk, which is that Bill Self philosophically wants to get easy shots at the rim. And the easiest way to do that usually is with big guys. Right now they don't have that. So instead of having a back to the basket guy, the only way they're getting shots at the rim is when KJ or Ernest or Zuby are rim running and catching lobs or Jalen and Dewan driving downhill and scoring at the rim, which that's great that you're able to do that. But what is a higher percentage shot? Like long term, like you want a big guy. You want a guy who's six, nine, who can go down there and dunk the ball, not a six foot point guard who is having to score off runners and floaters. So he can do it, but I don't think that's what you want long-term if you want to see this team reach their potential offensively. Yeah, I agree. And I was I was looking today, I think Kevin McCuller is like 11 of 15 on, on shots at the rim. Um, I think on shots that are outside the rim, so two-point, you know, mid-range, whatever, and three-pointers, it was like five of 19. I do think that will get better. Uh, obviously, the, the jump shot has been a little streaky for him in his career, but he was shooting well before the ankle injuries last year. And obviously, like that's that's the swing skill for him. It's not just a thing for Kansas. Like if he wants to you know, be an NBA draft pick, he's he's got to shoot it better. And, and I think that will kind of come with time. Um, he had the five turnovers last game. I know a lot of people, like you said, were kind of getting him on about that. But everything else is there. He he has the trust, I think, of the coaching staff because he plays great defense. He led Kansas in rebounding. He's a good passer and facilitator even though he did have the the just five turnovers. I, I think there's more to come for Kevin McCuller. And, uh, like, let's not forget, he is a newcomer. Like, it took time for Remy Martin. It takes time for a lot of these freshmen. So uh, just give it some time, and I think there will be even more there for Kevin McCuller, and he's already been, in my estimation, really good. Uh, I have one more Thanksgiving 
segment here for for KU basketball or a Thanksgiving te- segment I should say uh, to finish things up but first this episode is brought to you by bet online betonline.net is your number one source for sports betting information stats news and analysis get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there from football to basketball to soccer esports they've got it all at betonline.net and if you love sports podcasts you can find those at bet online as well you can bet on team usa in the world cup they just uh, had a draw with wales i don't know if you want them against england to be patriotic you can bet on kansas plus 12 against kansas state in saturday's regular season finale or you can bet on anything with kansas in the battle for atlantis last i saw they were going at plus 250 with tennessee to win it uh, you can bet them on any of the individual games as well with NC State first up. They are the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. Head to betonline.net to the website, or you can use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online where the game starts. All right, finishing things off here, Nick. Uh, I've got a, a Thanksgiving, I guess, kind of themed segment here. Um, I want you to turn a Thanksgiving meal into some Kansas basketball players. So I'll, I'll get you started here. Jalen Wilson is the turkey of the team, right? He's the center of the show. Um, I, yeah, I think Juan Harris. Think, but some people think turkey's overrated. Okay, well, well, you can you can make your own meal however you want. Um, Dewan Harris, for me, I would say is the gravy, right? He's He just kind of goes with everything. He's, he's not maybe the star of the show, but you can put him on anything. You can work him with anything. It works. Maybe Ernest Uday and Zuby Edgefer is like a pie that somebody forgot to put in the oven. Like, it looks like it's going to be really good, but it's not done yet. I don't know, maybe... Uh, Maybe Bill Self coming back is the uncle that's like saying stuff to you at the dinner. I don't know. Make make your Thanksgiving meal. So okay, um, I'm actually gonna say that I'm gonna say that Jalen Wilson is the mashed potatoes. Has to it has to happen. You has you have to have Jalen Wilson play well because of how much you're asking him to do just like you have to have mashed potatoes on your Thanksgiving plate. I don't really care what else you have, turkey, dark meat, brown meat. I don't, you can even go with ham for all I care. Stuffing, gravy, cranberry sauce, don't care. The mashed potatoes, for me, are a must. It starts with mashed potatoes, and quite frankly, I'm probably going back for seconds. I'm going to say Grady Dick is the turkey, because when done right, the turkey can be incredible. It can be the best thing that you've eaten all year. But some people don't know how to cook turkey, Derek. Some people overcook it. Like just oven roasted turkey? Sorry, not interested. But you're going to put a brine on that turkey? You're going to inject it with some sort of butter, some sort of sauce, put that thing on the smoker, deep fry it. When done well, and it can come in a lot of different variations, it could be incredible just like Grady Dick. When he's on, he's electric, but he's a freshman, so it's inconsistent, and you don't know what you're going to get on any given night. Um, Man, where do I go from here? I'm going to say that Dwan Harris is the Brussels sprouts. Not everybody likes Brussels sprouts. I get it, but I do. And I think Brussels sprouts can be, you know, they can tie your meal together. Now, some people go green beans. So you, if you're a green bean person, if you're an asparagus person, then, then you can make him your greens. But you need to have them because it's good for you. You may not love them. It's not going to be your favorite thing on the meal, but you want to be a little bit healthy. Just like with Dewan Harris, he's not your favorite player. He's not ever going to be the guy where you say, you know what, he's my favorite. He's the best player on the court, but you need him. You need a point guard. You need somebody to steer the ship. You need him to sort of be the orchestrator on offense. And then, you know what, I'm going to say that I'm not going to give one to everybody because this would take way too long. No, no. The, the last one I want to give out is uh, is the cornbread muffins. Um, and the cornbread... <laughs> I'm struggling with this one. I'm going to say MJ Rice is the cornbread muffin, okay? Because you don't always get the cornbread muffin. I mean, some people go pumpkin pie. I want cornbread muffins. So, you know, he's he only played two games. So, like, some days he may not even be there. And you say, wait a minute, who was supposed to bring MJ? Who was supposed to bring the cornbread muffins? Did nobody speak for this? Because I thought we were getting cornbread muffins. And then all of a sudden, nobody put the cornbread muffins on the plane to go to Indianapolis. What's the deal? What's the story? Why aren't the cornbread muffins at every Thanksgiving? Because they're a delicious treat. So that's MJ Rice. So I got four for you. I hope I did well. I like it. I like it. We didn't get any uh, cranberry, which I found out is Lance Leipold's favorite. Um, No, because that's why I'm not going to talk trash on anybody like that. Because I don't think the cranberry should be present. And I'm not going to look at any of the KU (laughs) players and say they shouldn't even be on the team. Wow. I I, I don't like cranberry either. But hey, stuffing is the best for me. No, I also, I don't care for stuffing, so. Wow. 
That's that's bad. I, 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 like made, stuffing? A it's like, I made a good plate. I had turkey. You did, good. but like stuffing is like bread. Oh, okay. and, I don't know. I don't know. Think, I don't know. Uh, Kevin McCullers, mm. the Hawaiian rolls. I feel like you have a lot of uh, starch in your Thanksgiving. Yeah, mashed potatoes, cornbread. <laughs> I got the turkey and the Brussels sprouts, though. It's fairly yeah. healthy. Yeah, just get a little green on there. You're good to go. Well, yeah. Nick, appreciate it as always. Anything you want to plug with, with Waving the Weed or 610? Yeah, we got Waving the Weed episodes coming out every single week. And uh, yeah, Cody and Gold on 610 every day uh, from 10 to 2. All right, awesome. That's Nick Schwert. You can give him a follow as well uh, at Nick underscore score Schwert. You can see it on, on YouTube as well. That's going to be it for this episode of Locked on Jayhawks. Come up on tomorrow's show. We are going to uh, look ahead to kind of the battle for Atlantis and, and start previewing things there. You can reach out to me at D Johnson Radio or comment on YouTube if you have anything you want us to discuss don't forget to subscribe to the show so you're getting all the latest wherever you get your podcast or with youtube that'll do it for today's episode have a good rest of your day i'll see somebody on rock chalk sports talk later today bye